Yeah, I got to tell you, I'm doing something right. I'm glad I don't drink, drink coffee here because sipping your next Starbucks can cost you big bucks. If you use the company's app to pay for your caffeine fix, you may be at risk to internet thieves draining your bank account. The customers blame Starbucks, and now Starbucks is blaming the customers. Hmm. Cybersecurity expert Scott Schober, an author of his upcoming new book, Hacked Again, is here to discuss this. You know, look, Scott, you've been on the show many times. You know, we've yes. had great conversations here. You know how much I hate technology and apps. <laughs> Another app, here we go. So what, what's going on here with this? Uh, again, there's a vulnerability in, in Starbucks there. They don't have two-factor authentication. They have very basic username and password. And even last year, they were hacked, and they, the, the passwords were actually out in a text file somebody found. So it's very easy to hack into their app, and, and many users use it. There's about $2 billion in mobile payments that Starbucks does a year. So this is a huge, huge amount of commerce that Starbucks gets when people come to the register and, and purchase. And, and really, people are, are, hackers are targeting that, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to steal the money. Oh, well, of course. And you know, it's easy. Yeah, but, but this is the thing, though. But here's the thing, though. You know, there's this old adage, the customer is always right. How is Starbucks going to blame the customers on this? They're consumers. Yeah, they, they, they really got no case there. It's hard to blame the consumers, but the consumers do need to make sure they have strong passwords to protect their accounts, because the hackers basically found a loophole. Mm -hmm. They found that they can hack into the Starbucks account through the app or through the online portal, and they could simply change the username and the password, and they can basically give themselves a gift certificate. And what they do is they then take that money and they steal it. And that's connected to the user's bank account, which is very scary. Right. And there's an autofill feature there that basically, like an easy pass, where after $25 is, is used up, it automatically goes to the bank account, pulls another 25 they go in, change the username and the password, lock out the customer, and now they raise the autofill to $75 or $100 and steal their money, and they run. Unbelievable. You yeah. know, another Scary nightmare stuff. here, Sally Beauty, they have about almost 5,000 products and stores nationwide. What's going on there with them? Yeah, this is the second hack, and this is where it's really getting embarrassing. As you mentioned, there are almost 5,000 stores internationally, and this time what happened? 260,000 credit cards mm -hmm. appeared on the same website for sale as Target and Home Depot. They're selling it. They, they basically planted through, a, again, a employee access portal. The employee, one of the district managers, had on his computer username and password. Mm -hmm. And that's all it takes. Once they know that, they could plant malware and now suddenly collect the credit cards. All right, a uh, quick solution to this, of course, cold cash, don't use apps. Cold cash, All right. that's let's, what let's, I do let's, too. Let's move on to one other thing here. Uh, of course, the NSA here, yeah. the, the House voted to end the NSA's bulk collection of phone records. What will this mean, if anything? Well, NSA still has access. If they, if they basically will say, hey, look, we really are investigating a particular crime. Right. We need to collect this. They will be able to still get that, but they won't be able to do massive surveillance. For you and I and all the listeners here, they won't be able to get all of our metadata and things associated to our phone conversations. That's what it's all saying. Okay, listen here. This is what I want to talk about because we've already talked about the solutions of all this. It's really simple here. But you also have a bunch of solutions in your new book. Hold this up here. Yeah, hacked Again. Yeah, this is Hacked Again. Tell us about this book. Well, this book is after we were hacked. We were a victim. <laughs> our company, yes, guilty. We were hacked. Our, our credit cards, our checking account, our website, our Twitter feed, and this was basically a lesson. And mm -hmm. I, uh, this is my candid lesson in what I learned and how to protect yourself so you are not a victim and end up getting hacked. So I would assume in this book here, there's light at the end of the tunnel for the average person who exactly. picks up this book. They can protect themselves yep. by reading Hacked Again. Exactly. Your average viewer can go on this and learn tips how to protect yourself, stronger passwords, not be a victim of ransomware and all these other terrible crimes that hackers are chasing. Okay, we're going to pick up the book. My thing, of course, is put the money and stuff into the mattress. Very smart. Thank you. <laughs> Scott Silver, thank you for joining us as always. Thank you. Next, how one parent turned divorce into a business opportunity. You're watching a rise exchange, your best opportunity.